Hello and welcome to my channel, Bobo Bun So Vintage Life. I'm Lisa and I'm a vintage inspired dressmaker and dress picking teacher. And in today's video, it's going to be a bit more of a sew and tell, sort of show and tell, and sewing related stuff. So I shall see you in a moment to show you all. <laughs> joining me today it's lovely to have you here and I'd like to apologize for not posting last week I know you don't necessarily expect it but I like to keep up a weekly regular you know posting because I know I really enjoy the same from other people it's not like an expectation but it is rather nice because you dip in um, you know and find out what people are up to so if you're disappointed I do apologize but uh, my previous post when I was saying about starting my business um, yeah, that's like really, really busy. And then last week, just lots of things all happened, you know, really lovely things. Um, so it ended up with, other than me teaching in the evenings and at, on the Saturday, I was sort of having holiday kind of time. So yeah, juggling everything, I just couldn't fit it all in. So yeah, much needed um, rest and holiday time. So I thought I'd squeeze in um, an extra one this week and then, um, I'll do my usual a bit later on in the week. I just wanted to catch up because we've done so many lovely things and I found so many vintage treasures so I thought you'd like to see them because they're obviously all sewing related um, along with the, the new things I've bought and whatnot. So I think I'll go back from yesterday, go backwards um, rather than going the other way and forwards. So yesterday was the Little Vintage Love Affair, which is just a marvellous fair in Hayden. And I have got um, a video all about the fabulous village of Hayden. Um, Little Vintage Love Affair hasn't been at Hayden for two years now, so we were super excited to go. People really dress up, um, you know, it's a marvellous event. And I just didn't take many photos yesterday. I was so caught up in catching up with friends and I saw some family there and just chatting and being and treasure hunting. So yeah, my, um, you know, I was thinking, oh, I want to share it with you all, but I'm sorry, I just caught up in the moment. So um, I'll pop up some photos of the day that I have got. Um, yeah, and what I wore, a dress that I actually made for a wedding about a year ago and I've never ever worn it it's just shocking and it actually features in my video um, but yeah so I had the first outing yesterday and I'm wearing another one in a fabric that I absolutely adore fabric I got from Fabric Godmother um, from a 1947 um, you know influence from a fabric swatch but I don't really like the dress it's just it's hot and I thought oh this will be ideal to put on but you know, I feel it squishes my bosoms all up. I don't like how low I've done the um, arm side. You know, it's all my fault. But yeah, so it's not my favourite of dresses. Even though the dress is lovely and got potential. So I probably just need to revisit the pattern. But hey ho, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful fabric. But yeah, I do feel a bit, probably um, not too bad a thing. But yeah, there we go. So at Hayden yesterday, I'm not going to show you everything I got, you know, because I, I got some lovely um, little china rabbits and tins and, and whatnot. But I found this store that got a basket of the most amazing patterns from the 30s onwards, but they were all about £20 a pattern. So, hmm. you know, it's something you could see why, um, you know, they were worth their value, but I obviously couldn't be affording to buy those. So I did pick up this one, this blouse pattern, which is rather delightful really rather like that one down there you know that's one of my favorites so got those patterns and i got this one which i think was very late 30s or early 40s it looks more like 30s to me this one and it's literally got a little instruction book that's about this big so thank god i know how to put together a garment so that may get made one day it's fairly similar to the bella tea dress from liberty but with these inset um, these bits here, so you've got sort of like a, a deep yoke and then the, the fabric's gathered into there. But I thought that was rather beautiful. I love the image. That was quite expensive, actually. And then I came across these beautiful, beautiful um, books. 
um, needlework. They're from the 40s, so they've got lots of war adverts, but oh, don't you just love those adverts on the back? And this one, very wartime, the Spitfire with the Silco threads. I love that one, the little boys see. And they are just an absolute delight throughout. Just trying to find you some of the things, the cocktail sandals. Here we go. Look at the cocktail sandals you can make. And the dance bag. Oh, they're just absolutely delightful. So, you know, a good friend of mine, she um, gave me a disc. That's very kind of her. And then I got this lovely book, How to Make Flowers with the Denison Crepe Paper. Not just any old crepe paper, Denison Crepe Paper. But I thought I could transfer these over to the, um, the felt flowers that I make. Similar process. Got all the... the um, petals and patterns in here and look this reminds me of the old um, table settings you used to get in this real intensity of colour it might be scenes from London and whatnot usually the 60s ones but it's a really really beautiful booklet um yeah I just absolutely love it so how to make flowers I've got that um I've got some bits of fabric off my friend uh, Teresa who's a vintage um, fabric dealer um, this, I don't know if it's going to be big enough to even make the smallest blouse, but it was just too good to leave behind. So I picked that up, it's, you know, it, something will happen with it, won't it? So I've got that, and then I've got this one. There was three metres of this, but it's uh, about 88 centimetres wide, as is the case with vintage fabric. The looms were a lot narrower, so the fabric widths, um, consequently, are narrow. That's upside down. It's not my usual colour, but I thought it was rather beautiful. It's got all the Chinese scenes on it with boats and little pagodas and the flowers. But I just thought that was absolutely beautiful. That would need underlining because it's super see-through. So no plans as yet for that, but that's there. Oh yes, and my friend, she gave me this lovely little handkerchief. It's like a little scarf hanky. Norwich Broad. She said it reminded me of, uh, uh, reminded her of, you know, me talking about my dad and how he had a boat yard on the Norfolk Broad. So, not fabric related, but look at this delight. It's a little velvet clutch purse, all embroidered all over with gold. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And then there's a little pocket in there to put your lipstick on, in. So, needs a little bit of mending, but um, I'll definitely be using that, and for which I will tell you in a bit. You know what um, that's going to inspire. Oh, this wasn't from yesterday. Found these fabrics, uh, cur these curtain fabrics, in a vintage shop during the week. Two of these, and they are absolutely incredible. And I'm sending one to a friend of mine who lives by the coast. The friend I stayed with in the week. Um, we had a lovely time, um, and I just thought because I was visiting her new cottage that um, she just moved into, and. This fabric, it's just made for her cottage. So she's having one of those to make a lovely bedroom curtain. Um, yeah, we had a marvellous time. Saw another old friend who um, I knew since I was 17. I met her because we used to model together. Um, so she approached me in the street. So she's a little bit older than me. Um, so yeah, she sort of looks up for me. So that was lovely to see her as well. And then we went to see the carnival in Sheringham and we went on the Dodgems, which was really good fun. Um, we wanted to do it the proper way, which is to go the wrong way around and bash into each other. And luckily all the other adults wanted to too. Um, and the garden fair of Grand Ride, let us get on with it. I guess because we all just all avoided the kids. We were like swerving around so we didn't smack the kids up. But yeah, we did that. Um, and we went into a vintage shop. Oh, I found the most glorious vintage frocks, which we were looking inside and out of. And um, the only thing that would fit me in there but also what I need, it's a lovely chemise. Oh, it's for Edwardian or Victorian, but it will work as a petticoat um, you know, cover under. So I've got to wash this and just do a little repair on that. That's really, really pretty. So I've got that. Um, what else have I got to show you? Oh, you see, I've got this other fabric at the vintage fair yesterday. It's very satiny and silky, but I thought that was rather fun. Might be rather nice at Christmas, make a little blouse. So I've got that, and um, oh, I've got some fabrics for Millie. My daughter Millie chose this. 
there's a really lovely little ditzy print to um, make another dress, one that I have made for her before. Um, oh, they all smell a bit foisty, I really need a wash. And then look at the colour of this pink, it's a uh, linen tablecloth, it's just absolutely beautiful. And can you see it on the proper side? It's for a six um, seat table, so it's huge. So I don't know, I might sew with it, or I might use it as a tablecloth, I don't know. But that really is a bit feisty doisty, I don't like that. And my friend Kim, when I went to stay on, she's a dressmaker also. Um, and we were swapping presents from Christmas. We're both Christmas babies and we've not seen each other for ages. Just life's conspired. So um, we swapped our presents and she gave me fabric and buttons and ribbons. And I pretty much gave her the same, which was like, really funny because that's what dressmakers who love vintage and bits and bobs do. And um, she'd found this beautiful uh, black lace remnant. So she popped that in knowing that I'd find a use for that. So again, that will come in handy for my plans because I've um, booked a ticket to go to the dressmaker's ball in Leicester on the 1st of October. Okay, I mean, I wanted to go before COVID and then it hasn't happened for two years. And then uh, another um, vintage sewer on Instagram asked me if I was going and I thought, I just can't do it. I'm working all day till half two on the Saturday. And I was thinking like, it's a two and a half hour, three hour drive up there and, <clears throat> You know where am I going to stay and whatever and then my love said well I'll drive you up there and he can go and stay with friends uh, nearby in Birmingham and he said just book the ticket and then I thought I'll worry about accommodation after that so I've booked the ticket to go to this lovely event in the most beautiful um, surroundings with about 140 other sewers um, yeah don't know anybody my friend Kim this week said oh I'd love to come with you can I come we'll go next year um, but I don't mind not knowing anybody. Yeah, just go up there and see what happens. So I've got to make a lovely frock. I just thought it would be great to get to know some other people and, and see what's happening out there. So fancy frock time, hence my little black clutch bag. And I'm thinking something along the lines of um, either 50s, you know, that's got and um, draping in it or um, black lace over it. <clears throat> but I'm thinking I just don't really want to underwire, you know, a, strapless bra they always slip down they feel uncomfortable i think if you've got smaller boobs they're probably okay but yeah they just drive me at the wall um or i'm talking the idea of like um a 30s bias cut or even a 40s i watched the film again uh, miss Pet pettigrew lives for a day it's just absolutely glorious and amy adams costumes and, and the gold dress she wears um in the nightclub scene and I found a similar vintage pattern to it so I'm toying with do I go full length like full on or um 50s more covered up and I also don't like just busty hair with all your shoulders on. maybe it's my age because I don't like part of my body so much but I don't know I'm that fussed I just feel like there's a whole lot of skin going on up into neck and I maybe with short hair maybe it looks better if you've got longer hair but yeah old necks and strapless they're not really my thing yeah, I just don't feel my like, ooh, you look good in that. So, um, yeah, that's that. Um, some other things that I got, because we're talking about the dressmakers, but I'm sorry, I'm going to think to thing, my head's quizzing. I got this fabulous book the other week, and it's Everyday Fashions of the 50s from Sears Catalogue. And when I saw this advert, these sandals at the bottom, uh, exactly the same as my um, memory shoes sandals and they are just absolutely glorious and I love memory shoes they're just the most marvellous and I've just been looking through for lots of other inspiration uh, for the dressmaker's ball quite liked that um, kind of dress quite coming off the shoulder I put all my pink post-it notes in so I can find the pictures I want to have a look at and then I can't turn this one oh my gosh yeah these ones, they're called Fashions for the Gracious Lady. <clears throat> she's probably my age or younger. I think she's younger, actually, some of them anyway. Doesn't that show you what being in your 50s is about nowadays as opposed to then? Then you were seen as the gracious lady, kind of had your moment. But there's some absolutely fabulous um, things in there. 
And we've had some other lovely history visits, went to an amazing moated um, National Trust house called Oxborough Hall. So I have um, chatted about that on my Instagram channel. Um, and then we went to um, Wimpole Hall this week as well on Friday. We've sort of decided Fridays are like our intrepid uh, National Trust Explorers Club. That's what we do. So we're intrepid explorers for National Trust. Um, it's always a must to go to the bookshop. And I found some fabulous books, some for friends of mine that are illustrators, all like 30s books about lettering and things. So I was really chuffed to find that from a friend of mine. I've been looking for this book for ages. So it's like a pound, you know, in the National Trust secondhand bookshop. I'd really wanted to read this book for a while, The Sewing Machine, so thrilled with that. And I'd also wanted this, and that was there too, the button box. The story of women in the 20th century told through the clothes they wore. So, thrilled to get that too. And the other find, I'm a darling Buds of May fanatic from the original 1980s one and having read the original books. So, it's like the annual haul for the darling Buds of May. With loads of photos, you know, obviously the period pieces. So, yeah, um, got those. I've got, I've got sort of loads of things and then, the week before that we found all of these wonderful magazines. I've got them from the 30s through to the 50s. So yeah. stuff to look at and read and use is coming out of my ears. Um, I'm super, super busy with um, all the work stuff because not only have I been trying to book in all the classes for next block, which are sold out, I'm having to think ahead to like January, February, and it's just like, whoa, it's like super planning and, and lots of other things to do and get in touch with newspapers to see if I can get features written on me and, you know, all sorts of things, get the word out there. Plus a really big idea that I've started to plan with a friend of mine as well. So that's something for like next spring, which is like ginormous idea. Something I've thought about for a long time and then I was in the shower one morning and I just went, whoa, 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 you know, here, there, and yeah. So there's all sorts going on. And I think that's probably why the sewing's kind of calming down because, yeah, my head has only got so much room and I really want to sew and I'm not finding time to sew. Um, yeah, and get my creative back. But I have got some sewing things that I can show you this week because I want to show you about the vampire's wife dress and how I constructed that. That was my latest make, so you will get that. Um, and I've also got one other thing to show you, so vintage, this 1930s dress. It's actually over on my mannequin on a work in progress, a pattern I've been drafting. Um, so I won't bother talking about that because it just looks like a hot mess right now. But my daughter Millie got a few things yesterday and she picked up this 1930s dress. I mean, our hands can barely go into the sleeve cuff. And she said, look, it's not gonna fit me in a million years. It's, it's minute. I think the waist is about, you know, half on the front of my waist, but it's utterly beautiful. And my friend and I said, buy it because it's a thing of beauty. Um, I can try to copy it for her, um, you know, grade it up to her size. Obviously you won't have this gorgeous fabric. This fabric really is a delight. It's um, like a thin gauze then with these almost embossed, you know, they sort of feel slightly velour flowers on them and cream. And it's a totally handmade dress, you know, it's all pink shears and zigzagged over on the um, edges. But the zip in it is a newer zip. So I think the seller has just replaced this, but it doesn't move very well. Um, and interestingly, it's been lapped the other way around and not very well. So yeah, it would need a few things because you know, it's been lapped, but you can still see the zip. So yeah, fussy me. Um, you know, it's got ties to the back and then a beautiful deep fill to the bottom. So yeah, luckily Millie got that and I said, well, you can keep it. It's a thing of beauty to hang up. If not, we can then sell it on. So yeah. She got it, thankfully, and it is really delightful. So there's been so much treasure hunting and all things um, sewing related and, and lovely days out. And yeah, I just wanted to share it all with you. So hopefully very soon we'll get back to sewing. Yeah, because I want to talk you through the vampire's wife dress. So I'm planning, you know, I'm filming this on Monday, um, being taken out to lunch tomorrow by a friend. Um, that's a long journey. I can't believe how sociable I'm being at the moment. 
um, got lovely friends so yeah I'm glad they hang on for me um, and then I'm hoping on Wednesday to film the um, vampire's wife to show you fingers crossed um, as the week goes by so thank you so much for joining me today um, it's always a pleasure having you here and um, I love reading your comments and I'm really glad that you enjoy um, you know inspires you and, and makes you happy just as I feel when I watch other people so really appreciate your comments if you don't want to miss my videos then subscribe and yeah you'll get pinged and you'll know when they're coming up I do try to keep to a Thursday it's just gone a little bit off power plan lately because of other life things but eventually it will all fold back into how it should be so until next time I shall see you soon goodbye